uh, back to the 90s. This is the second week. Um, last week, we talked about uh, Psalms 91. Uh, we revisited that, that, uh, that chapter, that book of uh, Psalms, um, and we spoke about uh, how God is our, our refuge. He is, he is our, our hiding place and, and that we give all of our, our um, baggage to God and, and we seek him uh, for his, his, his protection and comfort. Uh, this week, we are going to talk about Psalms 94. Now, Psalms 94 is a very unique uh, uh, chapter. Um, it speaks about God um, in a different light. Um, it talks more on the side that, you know, vengeance belongs to the Lord. And so um, this book here, uh, this chapter 94, it, it, it goes into depth and, and, and starts off as a prayer. Um, and then we are enlightened by um, God's words of, of allowing God to bring justice and, and bring justice in his timing and how it's also um, used as a tool to reteach us or to guide us, uh, uh, to get us in, in correct balance um, with uh, our Father in heaven. Uh, so let me share my screen here. All right. Can everyone see my screen? All right. So back to the 90s, Psalms 94. Now, tonight's big ideal is that uh, God is the God of justice and judgment. And we'll start with the scripture uh, for this um, lesson tonight. So if you have your Bibles or your apps, I am going to um, Psalms 94 verses one through 23. And I am coming tonight out of the uh, New Living Testament. Uh, Testament. And it reads as follows, O Lord, the God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, let your glorious justice shine forth. Arise, O judge of the earth, give the proud what they deserve. How long, O Lord, how long will the wicked be allowed to gloat? How long will they speak with arrogance? How long will these evil people boast? They crush your people, Lord, hurting those who claim, uh, hurting those you claim as your own. They kill widows and foreigners and murder orphans. The Lord isn't looking, they say. And besides, the God of Israel doesn't care. Think again, you fools. When, when will you finally catch on? Is he deaf, the one who made, made your ears? Is he blind, the one who formed your eyes? He punishes the nations. Won't he also punish you? He knows everything. Doesn't he also know that you are what you are doing? The Lord knows people's thoughts. He knows they are worthless. Joyful are those you discipline, Lord, those you teach with your instructions. You give them relief from troubled times until a pit is dug to capture the wicked. The Lord will not reject his people. 
he will not abandon his special possession. Judgment will again be found on justice. And those with virtuous hearts will pursue it. Who will protect me from the wicked? Who will stand up for me against evildoers? Unless the Lord has helped you, I would soon have settled in the silence of the grave. I cried out, I'm slipping. But you, but your unfailing love, O oh Lord, supported me. When doubt filled my, my mind, your comfort gave me renewed hope and cheer. Can unjust leaders claim that God is on their side? Leaders who decree permits injustice, they gang up against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord is my fortress. My God is the mighty rock where I hide. God will turn the sins of evil people back on them. He will destroy them for their sins. The Lord, our God, will destroy them. Vengeance belongs to God. The Psalm starts by describing God, not as a God of love and mercy. The Lord is described as the God of vengeance. This is a bold call for um, this is a bold call for for God to rise up and act. We're asking God and rise up and act against what we see every day: the injustice, the 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 arrogance of people doing bad things. We're asking God to act by bringing justice. The writer is calling for justice against the proud that they receive when uh, that they would receive what they deserve. In fact, we see here, it is no problem with asking God to enact justice. Have you ever been in a position where you, you bit your tongue or, or bit your bottom lip so hard and you just was like, God, handle them. You know, handle them before I come out of character. You know, that's how this, this uh, psalm is starting off. You know, we want God to enact now. And sometimes we want it now, but God has a different plan, right? Um, there is no problem with asking God to uh, hand evil people their uh, just deserve. God is a God of justice, which is vengeance. Now, the terminology vengeance should not cause us to uh, have any troubles or concerns, right? However, the question is brought in the prayer. So number one, how long will the wicked and the proud be allowed to gloat in their evil? Number two, how long will they be allowed to maintain their arrogance? Number three, how long will evil people continue to boast? Now, the writer goes on to describe their actions as if uh, the mention of their actions will cause God to stand up. Just like, you know, children, right? Um, kids know just what to say. Adults know just what to say uh, to put a person that's listening to make them jump out of their seat. You know, you got my attention. This is what they, this is what the writer is, is, is trying to do with these questions. He's trying to make these questions plain, make them um, in a way that God would say, okay, I'm listening, I got you, I'm, I, I, you got my attention now. The actions that, um, the evil, that they're saying about the evildoers is that they are crushing God's people. God, they are trampling over your people. They don't care about their feelings. They don't care about uh, the things that they do and how has adverse effects on uh, other individuals or communities. Uh, it's saying that they're hurting the righteous, those that live right every day, those that get up, uh, uh, praise God, uh, go about their journey in a kingdom manner, 
um, show love and, and, and care, uh, they're getting trampled. Some evildoers uh, even kill widows and orphans. So they're saying, God, the evil people, they're, they're taking away lives. Don't you see this? Can you imagine the thought process of evildoers? With all the mass shootings here in our country, um, you know, can you imagine the mindset of the gunmen? You know, on your worst day, you know, that day where, you know, those uh, two gray hairs of yours um, start to come out. And, you know, have you ever been in a position where you would do some of the things that the wicked do? I've never been in that place uh, to where I have in, enacted. But I, I, you know, I'm human. I've I've been in places where um, I've wanted to get out of out of the character. But I thank God for always being there to point me in the right direction, to comfort me. He uh, he became my my solitude. He became the fortress that I, I ran to um, to calm myself down, and and that is a, a wonderful thing. That is. It's beautiful to be able to go to the Lord, uh, even when no one else can talk you down. Now, Psalms 8, verse 8 through uh, 11 is about how God knows. So I was just talking to uh, uh, my younger brother this past weekend, and uh, we happened to be on the subject of uh, decisions and consequences in our lives. You know, bad decisions that cause pain, uh, good decisions um, that, you know, can improve someone's future, um, them securing the right position in life, or how that certain decisions can lead to ignorant responses, uh, the loss of people and love. And, you know, my younger brother, lost a friend this weekend um, and there was a situation where he was in and he had to make a decision and it was a decision that was right for him. Um, and the other person that was involved with him uh, had to serve their consequences. But his family members, you know, gave um, the guy real bad ignorant responses in which he ultimately took his life. Um, and those individuals thought they were righteous by turning on him. But we have to be very um, intentional about what we say and how we do things. And so that, that conversation, I was able to uh, tell my little brother that, you know, God knows how he feels and he knows how the family feel on both sides and that God will... Um, bring justice, he will bring judgment. But as I talk later on, we'll find out that that judgment is a teaching tool, right? Um, you have to think God does not care. Uh, now in the scripture, it spoke about how God didn't care. So you who think uh, God does not care and God doesn't notice should really think twice. So in Psalms 8, Psalms 94, verses 8 through 11, the things that they were saying that the writer spoke about that the evildoers were saying was, is the one who made our ears not hearing these things we say? Is, is the one who made our eyes not seeing what we do? Do we think that the Lord who punished the nations will not also punish us for our actions? These questions are, are um, you know, in the mindset of, of these evildoers, you know, God don't hear us. He don't hear you crying to him. But we know God hears. God knows everything, right? We know God sees all this. Uh, the thing that we're having a problem with is why isn't God doing anything, right? But we know, you know, number three says, do we think the Lord who punishes nations will not also punish us for our actions? Of course. 
you know, I think about my son or, or uh, you know, how he, he doesn't think I see him in his room. You know, I don't have to be in his room to see what he's doing. I, I got ears and I can hear the things that he's doing. Um, and I can call it to his attention. You know, I may not be in your room right now, but I can hear it, you know, and and because I might be on a Zoom call or on a phone call doesn't mean that I'm not going to come back and and uh, talk to you about what you're doing. Um, our God sits on the rim of the earth. He's an omnipresent God. The all knowing God that knows everything. How is it that anyone would think God knows not what we do? I want to read to you uh, verse 11 from nine, uh, Psalms 94. It says here, God even knows your thoughts. He knows that our thoughts are worthless and simple vapors. Now, in the Message Bible, it says, God knows all right. He knows your stupidity and sees your uh, shallowness. Now, you know, we turn into... Um, We turn away and thinking that, you know, God doesn't know, but he knows everything, right? I mean that, you know, I mean to have, have you, have you ever been that, that mad or that just done with a situation that you would cause uh, that much harm to even one person? You know, their thought processes that they're having, that people are having, um, the evil doers, you know, maybe not even one that is that deep, but simply thinking without consideration of God, you know, um, they don't think God notices or they don't think God's looking, you know, um, my mother used to say, I don't have uh, to be in the room with you, right, you know, and today I use that same, you know, scenarios, and however, in this case, you know, it's the typical thinking that we have when we sin. We think that God does not notice. We think that God doesn't really care. Um, why? Because God didn't show up when we were directly in sin. If you know God, like uh, our parents know God, um, then you would know that it that God knows and notices and judgment is coming. God even knows our thoughts. He knows that our thoughts are worthless and simple vapors. Um, anyone who thinks that they are getting away with anything just because judgment wasn't immediately uh, falling is a fool, and, and that's that fool that they talk about in Proverbs, right? Being the fool and, and making foolish decisions. Only a fool would think that all God sees, uh, that the all-seeing God doesn't see or judge all of the earth uh, with not bringing judgment at a proper time. You know, I like to think that we have a unique, a awesome and merciful God, one who can give you uh, the opportunity to confess your sins, accept the consequences, but know that God has forgiven you. However, that has to take place to start with you and turning away from your sins. You know, I want to talk about uh, this, this, um, this, this uh, thought that I came across from H.C. Leopold. And it says here, um, there has perhaps never been a more devastating demonstration of foolish thinking, which men occasionally become guilty of when they imagine that the Lord is not aware what they are doing. As you re reflect on Psalms 94, pray that God will deliver you from this devastating demonstration of foolish thinking. He hears, he sees, he holds accountable. 
Don't hide behind the delusion that God doesn't see or hear. Instead, confess your sins and experience God's grace. God's discipline is not judgment or punishment. So now we're going to examine Psalms 94 verses 12 through 15. Now, in verses 12 through 15, the writer of Psalms 94 points out of the need for, for the righteous to find the blessings in life's difficulties. Hard times help us learn the way of God. Uh, we become more reliant on God and hopeful um, and more diligent to follow God's instructions when we go through difficult times. Uh, when we read about this type of discipline in God's words, we shouldn't consider it as uh, being a punishment for doing wrong. Instead, the discipline should be seen as God's training tool. We are uh, being trained when we go through tough times. Uh, think about the writer of Hebrews who discusses uh, the value of hard times and calls it discipline. Um, Hebrews 12, verses 3 through uh, 13. For consider him who endures such hostility from sinners against himself, so that you won't grow weary and lose heart. In struggling against sin, you have not yet uh, resisted to the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not take the Lord's discipline lightly or faint when you are reproved by him. For the Lord's discipline, the one he loves and punishes every son whom he receives. Endure it as discipline. God is dealing with you as sons. For at for what son is there for what son is there whom a father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, which all receives, then you are Ill illegitimate children and not sons. Furthermore, we have natural fathers discipline us and we respect them. Shouldn't we submit even more to a father of spirits and life and live? For they discipline us for a short time based on what seemed good to them, but he does it for our benefit so that we can share his holiness. No discipline seems enjoyable at the time, but painful later on. However, it yields the fruit of peace and righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore, strengthen your tired hands and weaken knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed instead. And I love that part in here in Hebrews back around verse 9. Uh, where it talks about a natural father's discipline and how we respect our natural fathers. And it goes on to say, so when God disciplines us, shouldn't we respect him even more? Shouldn't we fall on our knees and, 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 and thank God for his grace for taking that time to correct us, to train us in the right uh, direction? We must take the time of oppression and suffering and learn from those circumstances as hard as it is to endure. There are benefits when we choose to learn from our ordeals. There are four promises that God gives his people. The first promise is relief from troubled times. God does provide relief we are never crushed beyond hope. God will make sure to give us a breather 
and uh, get our feet back up under us before the next challenge. Number two, eventually punishment of the wicked. A time will come and a pit will be dug for the wicked because of their sins. The third, third promise is God's faithfulness. God will not reject his people. He will not abandon his special possession. Deliverance may be delayed and the time may be difficult, but God does not leave his people. And four, the triumph of the righteousness. Ultimately, righteousness and justice will triumph. But right now, justice and righteousness are delayed. Immediate judgment rarely occurs. When we are not, um, we are not to be shaken by this fact. However, we are to know the righteous will triumph and we must continue to pursue righteousness. <clears throat> now let's go into Psalms uh, 94, 16 through 19, where God is our rescuer. Now, verse 16, contains uh, some great restore rhetorical questions. Who is going to protect us from the wicked? Who is um, going to stand up for us against evil doers? The answer is no one. There is no one to deliver except God. God is the only deliverer to rely on. Without the Lord's help, we would be a uh, be nothing. God gives us comfort. God's love is unfailing. It's that unfailing love that can support us through difficult times and ordeals. In Jesus, uh, his hour of crisis, all of his, dis uh, his disciples deserted him. Think about when Paul was in prison and uh, writing that all had abandoned him. Let's go into 2 Timothy, the fourth chapter, verses 16 and 17. Paul writes, at my first defense, no one came to stand by me, but all deserted me. May it not be charged against them, but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me, the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. But God the Father was with Jesus on the cross, and God the Father was with Paul in prison. And when our minds are full uh, and filled up with doubt, as they certainly do, remember to turn to God. In an examination of Psalms 94, 20 verses 20 through 23, the latter half um, is described as the Lord is my fortress. The last four verses brings us back to the beginning. Unjust leaders can claim that uh, God is on their side, but it is not true because their actions do not reflect the character of God. Those in charge can act in wicked ways, but we will put our trust in the Lord. He is our refuge and he is our rock. We will rely on him because of the promises we have all studied in this lesson. Justice will eventually come and God will give us relief from our sorrows. God will turn the sins back on the evildoers. This leads us back to the original cry of the Psalms. How long will the wicked be allowed to gloat and speak with arrogance? The answer is that God will repay them for all their sins. They will be destroyed for their actions. 
we have confidence in this truth. Coincidentally, I have a friend uh, and he was going through some, some things at one time and um, he really wanted to see the Lord enact some, some type of vengeance on uh, someone that did him wrong. And as we were sitting there talking, I told him, I said, you know, don't become a pillar of salt. And he asked me, you know, what do you mean? I said, well, think about it like this. I think about when the angels came into Sodom and Gomorrah and they freed Lot and his family and they told him, you know, to head for the mountains and don't look back. But with all the loud noises and destruction going on behind him, I could only imagine why Lot's wife would look back. Sometimes we want to see what God is going to do. Sometimes we want to see how he's going to do it. We, we hear the commotion, you know, they were, you know, Lot and his family was heading for the mountain and, and they can hear the, the, the screams. They can, they can hear the crumbling of rocks and buildings. Um, they can hear the explosions. But the moment she turned back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So what I was telling him is, don't worry about how God is going to uh, correct someone. Just know that God is going to be uh, faithful to his word. But if God corrects them, and it's not in the way that you want it, know that it was for the glory of God, not for your glory. Be confident in the truth. So in conclusion, um, through painful sufferings, it is to be used uh, as God, through pain and suffering, it is to be used as God's training tools. So know that when you are going through some tough times, um, or when you're going through um, correction by God, know that it is his training tool. And when you see someone that is being wicked and not doing what they, they should do, then let's pray that God corrects them with his training tool, not to harm and hurt them, but to get them to see who he is and see the light of, of, of God um, and see that their actions, what their actions are doing to other people. Um, we pray that they are corrected so that they can stand with us and so that we can uh, praise God together. God knows uh, the thoughts and actions of all of us. Everyone will be repaid. So know that because you're in sin and God hasn't, or something hasn't happened to where you need to change and God hasn't stepped in, know that God sees it. He's giving you opportunity first to say, hey, Lord, I apologize. Um, I have not been right. I have not been doing what I should. I have been um, totally unbalanced with you. I have uh, sinned. And Father God, I ask that you forgive me. Um, confess so that the correction that God gives you is one that ultimately leads to uh, his glory. And number three, understand that no one gets away with anything. The wicked will be judged and the righteous will be vindicated and know that the glory of God will be given. So in 90, uh, this Psalms 94, um, just in studying it this, this last week, really, um, gave me some, some different insight. It, it reminded me that, you know, it's not, it's not what I want. It's what God wants. And it's always what God wants. And even though we cry, first we're, we're doing what 90 Psalms 91 says, right? We give that baggage to God. So 
we're crying out about what we see in this world, um, the things that may um, indirectly or directly affect us. We're giving that baggage to God. And even at a time where we may be just so heated about it and we want God to do something right now, you know, um, <clears throat> When the, the shooting happened in Texas a couple of weeks ago, I really wanted God to do something. But after studying this, this lesson, I now understand that it's in God's time. But what I can do is, is share um, great words, um, uplift individuals right here, um, those that, that have conversations about it, I can speak to the, the goodness of the Lord. Um, and for those that say, you know, God, let that happen, you know, and I can, I can speak about how God um, in his time is going to take care of that. Not because you um, in your emotions want it done now. So I really enjoyed this lesson and um, it, it really, um, allow me to understand how God moves. And so that when I do have those questions, you know, and like I said, I was talking to my little brother and he had those questions, you know, why would God allow this to happen? You know, God has a plan and it's by design, it's by his design and it will all work out for his, for the good of the Lord.